Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to class 10 students. Today we'll be learning a new poem in English and that is related to a happiness as well as a sadness. And that poem is The Stolen Boat. So what comes to your mind the moment you read The Stolen Boat? Okay, we understand that the boat is being stolen by somebody. So this poem is composed by William Wordsworth. So you all are very familiar with the poet William Wordsworth, right? In your lower classes, you've learned many poems about William Wordsworth. So before reading and understanding the poem, we'll read a note on the poet and then learn the poem. So here, William Wordsworth was born in 1770 and he died in the year 1850. And he is considered one of the greatest poets in English. And why is he considered? Because he and his friend, S.T. Coleridge, by their harbingers of the room, join, what they've done, he and his friends, they joined together and they started composing lyrical ballads. And that became harbingers of the romantic movement in English literature. So because of this, the com uh, composition of lyrical ballads, he became one of the known poets in English literature. And the episode of the stolen boat is based on the experience of Wordsworth's early boyhood days. And this poem is, written, is based on his experience when he was a young boy. This is an extract from book one of Wordsworth's great philosophical poem, The Prelude. So this is important. Underline this, The Prelude. And this poem is extracted from the book one. And the name of the book is The Prelude. Got it? So now, come to page 107, The Stolen Boat by William Wordsworth. We'll understand stanza wise. One summer evening, in bracket led by her, I found... A little boat tied to a willow tree within a rocky cave, its usual home. Straight I unloosed, I unloosed her chain and steeping, stepping in, pushed from the shore. It was an act of steel. Okay, now. What? So now, before we understand the stanza, I have an example for you all. If there is something very tempting in your home and your mother warned you that you will not touch it, but still, that temptation will not stop you. So what do you do? Without anybody else sees you, you'll go and eat. And what is that act called as? It's called as robbing, right? Or stealing. So here also, William Wordsworth has imagined himself and he's written this poem about his young childhood days. And he's telling that it was summer evening. How, how are evenings in summer? Yes, it's very pleasant. The sunset is beautiful. And when the sun is setting, you'll also feel the cool breeze, right? You get all those pleasant feelings. And moreover, what he did was, he followed by the nature. The very first line tells that, One summer evening led by her. Her denotes nature. So he followed the nature. And when he was walking in the nature, what he observed was, he found that there was one boat which was tied to a tree. So what he did and the place of the boat and its home for the boat was the rocky cave. It was tied under to a tree and it was kept under the rocky cave. And that is called the usual home for the boat. Straight I unloosed her chain and stepping in, pushed from the shore. It was an act of stealth. What he's telling? The moment he saw the boat which was tied to the tree, he stepped. When he unloosed, he unloosed the chain or whatever the rope, he's, the boat was free. He, sta he, sta uh, he sat inside the boat and he started rowing the boat and he started enjoying the boating. Even you all enjoy boating, right? Yes. So even he did this. But will you be happy if you rob something which you like? Yes. You'll neither be completely happy nor you'll be completely satisfied. So the poet tells about this feeling in the next stanza. And here, children, in the first stanza, a little boat tied to a willow tree. Willow trees are those trees which will grow near the sea, uh, sea water bodies. Do, we don't plant them. They themselves grow. So those trees are called willow trees and they have very thin branches. And then, next stanza, and trouble pleasure, nor without the voice 
nor without the voice of mountain echoes did my boat move on leaving behind her still on either side small circles glittering idly in the moon until they melted all into one track of sparkling light but now like one who rose proud of his skill to reach a chosen point without with an answering unanswer sorry with an unswearing line i fixed my view so now what is happening happening is and un and trouble pleasure what why is he telling trouble pleasure because he is already stealing the boat and no it's not a good act to steal somebody else's property right so he's telling that has become a troubled pleasure troubled happiness has come to him now nor without the voice and there's nobody around him nobody is there to make noise except for the noise of mountain echoes see when you go and observe admire the beauty of the nature you can listen to nobody because the place is completely vacant you can only listen to the nature that is birds chirping winds blowing and the mountain echoes in the sense if birds chirp also that the chirping of the birds will be echoed the voice goes and hits that place and comes back again did my boat move on so with the mountain echoes his boat was moving in the water leaving behind her still on either side how did the boat move on when when you row the boat you have to use the oars from both the side and one if you push one in front again you have to put the other on the other side you know how to row a boat right so he's telling that when he started rowing the boat the water was moving behind small circles glittering idly in the moon see when the when you start rowing the boat and when you use the oars the long stick which will have so the long stick which we call it as oars for rowing the boat when he started rowing the boat when those oars were going inside the water there were circles the waves were round small small waves were found and he's telling that in the evening time those waves were glittering idly in the moon so this means the sun has set completely and the moon is rising and in the shining moon he's telling the circles were glittering like stars understanding as you can see in the picture those water waves which are shining like stars glittering right so he's comparing the small circles of the water formed by the oars to glittering stars and now until they melted all into one track of sparkling light but now like one who rose proud of his skill to reach a chosen point with an unswerving with an unswerving line i fixed my view so now what he's telling is when he started rowing his boat continuously all these small wave circles were come and they started looking like one line can you see in the picture yes he is telling that all those glittering waves were look, turning into one line and now he is he is so confident that he is telling he is proud of rowing the boat he is telling that he is uh, he seems to be very skilled about rowing the boat to reach a chosen point he is telling that without having any destination destination in his mind he is going to reach one choosing one point which he will be choosing with an unswerving line i fixed my view with any without any destinations he's fixed his, fixed his view so let's read what is his view in the next stanza